Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you a more in-depth review of the camera slider that I use, which is by a brand called Great Video Maker. So basically, I've owned this slider for I think going on two years now. Since then, they have upgraded the system. Um, I think mainly the remote is the main part that they've really upgraded. So on Amazon, it'll look a little bit different, but I'll still have the link there. Um, to the, basically the same package that I got. So yeah, I've owned this for going on two years now, and so far, for everything that I've used it for, it has worked great. The motion of it has stayed pretty smooth. Um, it does really well with basically everything. I will be showing a couple different things that I don't like, mainly a camera cable connection, and also the remote that it comes with. I guess in transport, something me being too rough with it, the actual LCD inside the remote has shifted just a little bit. Thankfully, I can still see all the text on it, but those are just a couple things that after a little bit of use has become an issue for me. So without any more blabbing for me, let's go ahead and get straight into this review and show you what this slider has to offer. So with this slider package, you're going to receive the main slider itself. You also receive a remote that connects to the motor on the slider and then from that connects to the camera. And then a boatload of cables that are basically to connect to any camera that you want. And then lastly, you just receive this large carrying case with a bunch of foam in it for it to fit in. It's a pretty basic case and kind of annoying to have to lug around. There's also the instruction manual. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into this and just show you everything that this slider has to offer. All right, we're gonna look into the remote that comes with it first because basically this is your main way of using the slider. The USB at the top is what attaches down to the slider motor. The bottom has the power switch and the back is the battery power that is the Sony NPF style battery. So you basically have three options on this menu and my screen specifically has shifted a little bit as you can see there's a cheap plastic covering basically and the screen itself has shifted. Now since purchasing mine they do have a new model that looks like it is built a little bit better. I'm not sure about how well that one works but the settings on the remote are the same, so I'll continue to show you what this one has to offer. So let's first check out the video shot. You click the center button, selects that mode, and then you have the option of manual or auto mode. Manual mode, click on it, and you can adjust your speed with the up and down arrows. And basically manual mode works as long as you're holding the button down, the slider will move, you let off, and it'll stop. And you hold the arrow down in the direction that you want the slider to move. Before we go into the auto mode for shooting video, you have to set the spot at each end that you want the slider to stop or that it automatically starts going back in the opposite direction. To do that, we have to go down into the settings menu and there are two options, set start and set end. So first we will start with the set start and we'll move the slider over to the end where you want it to be. Hit the center button to make it stop and then hold down the center button to set the location in the settings. Then you just repeat the same process for setting the end. So send it to the opposite end of the slider and do the same thing, hold down the button to set the location. Now we can go back to video shot and go down to the auto mode and select either auto loop or auto stop. Under the auto loop setting, you can select your speed with the up and down arrows and then select the direction you want it to go. What that auto loop setting will do is go to the endpoints that we already set and then just go back and forth in between those two points automatically. And to stop it, you hit the center button and then you can change your settings. Hold down the center button to go to the main menu. Next we will try the auto stop setting and what that basically does is you start on one end, you set the direction you want it to go and when it gets to that end point that we set, it will automatically stop there. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the time lapse feature on this thing. So under time lapse you have several different settings, your first one being the interval and that is the space in between each stop for taking a picture. So you will want to keep that on the smallest that it is right now, which is 0.1. Just 
to keep your time lapse as smooth as possible. And basically the only other thing you need to worry about is the stop time, making sure that the stop time is longer than your actual shutter speed for your camera not to be moving while taking a picture. Now the instructions don't really give any detail about it, and I myself haven't exactly figured it out. But on the time lapse feature, I'm not really sure what it exactly does, but I just leave it where it is and go from there. And for the amount of photos, I pretty much put it as high as it will go when I want to do a time lapse, which is 9,999, just to make sure I have plenty of photos to take for the whole length of the slider, because it's really hard to judge with this slider not being very technical or anything. It's really hard to judge how many pictures it will actually do from one end to the other. And then lastly, you can put yes or no whether you want it to loop. Once it gets to the end of the slider, it can go back continuing the time lapse, or you can just have it stop. So you just select yes or no for that. Once you have those settings set, you can next go and select your speed. And for the time lapse, you're going to want to set it to a pretty low number. So one, it doesn't jerk as much when it's moving the camera but also it will shorten the length in between stops, which will help make a more smooth time lapse. And when you're ready, select the direction you want it to go and it'll start taking the pictures. And as you can see here, it's doing very minimal movement and each time it stops, it's triggering the camera. Now that's basically all the settings the remote has to offer. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the slider itself before we end this video. On each end you have little knobs that you can loosen up and then move the center rail one side or another and that will determine which direction the camera will pan. And putting it back in the center is pretty easy because there is a little groove that it kind of automatically slides into in the center. Now the way the panning is controlled in the center rail is there's a little bearing like contraption that is underneath the platform that just follows along in that rail for it to turn the camera. All the legs on this are threaded so you can adjust the height up and down depending on the surface you're on to get the motor high enough to avoid any obstacles. The way the motor works is pretty simple. There's the rubber band part that has teeth on it and they go around the center part of the motor that spins. The grooves fall into each other and they're wrapped around bearings on each side so it smoothly goes down the slider. If needed you can adjust the tension of this rubber piece by removing the end plastic piece and stretching it out and tightening it back on just in case the motor is skipping or anything and you might need to adjust this tension. On each end and also in the middle there is the option of the quarter 20 thread and also a larger thread which gives the option to use a tripod on each end or one tripod in the middle. When not using the motor, there is a threaded knob on the front that you can lock the platform down to keep it from moving around in transport. Also, they included a nice little level that no one probably ever uses. Now, because of the way the slider is made, there's a quarter 20 thread in the center, but you pretty much have to tighten the camera on it by spinning the actual camera itself. So. The best option is to buy a third party tripod head and this specific one is a larger thread that comes with a converter for the quarter 20 and once you have this on basically you now have the option to have a quick release plate on the camera to make it much easier to get the camera on and off. Now there is one cable that comes with this that plugs into the remote and the other end is a universal connection that connects to all the other cables that come with it to plug into whatever camera you want to use it on. One bad issue I have found is that the connection to this converting cable is very very loose and can keep the camera from being triggered. So you can see some tape residue on there to where I have just taped it around the 90 degree angle there to help to keep it connected. Lastly here's an example of the direction that the camera moves determined to the direction that the rail is moved into each corner. So if you're still here after all that, I'm pretty impressed. I know it was a little bit of a longer video, but I just wanted to show basically every detail that the slider has to offer to anyone that wants to buy it. If you're like me, you want to research it and really see what the product has to offer. So that's why I made it like I did. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you would do me a favor and give this video a like, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, if you want to keep up with the videos I'm putting out every week, you know what to do for that. And thanks for watching.